Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today, we're going to learn all about the brand new Ghost Horse, Brendan Small's latest signature guitar. Now, if you're not familiar with who Brendan is, he's most famously known for the show Metalocalypse. You could find that on Adult Swim on Cartoon Network. And that show follows the journey of a fictional parody metal band named Death Clock. And all the songs, voice acting, many of the animations and all that is all the brainchild of Brendan himself. Like he is just a one man talent machine. He does a whole bunch of stuff. But this guitar was released for his latest project called Galacticon. My favorite songs of his are Sky Hunter and Thunder Horse. And speaking of Thunder Horse, let's go ahead and talk about some of his signature guitars before the Ghost Horse came out. So he first started to be a Gibson endorsed artist around 2010, 2011 with the birth of the Thunder Horse Explorer. You can check out this review and demo if you want to see one in person, but it was an Explorer similar to this, but not exactly more on that in a bit, but it had a silver burst finish with binding and an ebony fretboard. It was a pretty cool guitar. It's one of my favorites just because I really love that song Thunder Horse. And then after that, in 2013, we saw the release of the Snow Falcon Flying V. That thing is sweet because of the white fenelic fretboard. But then after that, Gibson kind of dropped him down to the Epiphone lineup and created some really high-end Epiphones that are fantastic guitars. I haven't had the Thunder Horse Epiphone yet, so I can't really say anything on that, but I really enjoyed the Snow Falcon Epiphone version because they did a whole bunch of changes to it. It was technically better than the Gibson one because they added a kill pot to it that you could tap kind of like a kill switch and they added the coil splits. But here we are in 2021, they finally given him another signature guitar, once again for the release of the Galacticon project. These things retail in the stores brand new at $799, and I think it is an absolute steal for everything that you're getting here. So first off, the shape. It is not a regular Explorer. It is a little bit different. It kind of reminds me of the Futura shape, you know, the prototype Explorer, but it's not quite as goofy looking. The dimensions are just slightly changed. And the reason why I think he went for this is because he wanted this to be an all access playing and shredding machine. So back here, you actually get the sculpted heel cutaway. So that makes playing higher up in the registers theoretically easier and more comfortable. But you'll also notice some other things where he stepped away from tradition besides, you know, just the back and the shape in general is he went with 24 frets. And doing a 24 fretted instrument, you actually get your neck pickup closer to the bridge pickup. So they sound different just because of that. But then naturally having 24 frets, that's two additional tones for each string that you can get. And you're gonna notice, ha, huh, the first one of his signature guitars to get a Floyd Rose. So it all just made sense for his arsenal of signature guitars. This thing is completely new and different, but just like his other signature guitars, they all came with Gibson pickups and this one does too. And of course we have the coil splitting features on here. So you pull up on each of these knobs to split each individual pickup. So you can get some single coil tones as well as humbucker tones out of this guitar. And to continue on with what makes this one different is the fact that he actually gave it a flame maple top. Now it's not a top top, it's just a flame maple veneer. I guess we'll have to throw it on the workbench to verify that. But this will do some movement in the light and it's gloss on the front, so it's shiny. You can see it reflecting all the lights. But then when you switch it to the back, similar how this is a high performance spec, this is a satin finish on the back. So you're not going to stick to it. It's a little bit easier to play in theory. And to make things even better, the old Epiphones of his did not come with hard shell cases. This one did. They call this the Epiphone EpiLite case. It's kind of like a mix between a gig bag and a hard shell case. Like it's got the easy transportability of a gig bag. Like, I mean, look, it actually has decent backpack straps on it. It might look a little bit unwieldy having this giant rectangle on your back, but in theory, you could use it. It's a little bit more practical on like the Les Paul version, I would say but it's sturdy. It's got rigid edges to it. You've also got your bumpers on the bottom. You got a compartment on the outside to keep like your pedals, pedal board, whatnot. Originally from the factory, you get some case candy in here as well as your trem arm. The interior is not exactly form fit for an Explorer, but hey, this is kind of a weird Explorer shape. So it's nice that this at least comes in something. But you might say, hey, doesn't this kind of look like the new Prophecy Epiphone Extura? 
Kind of. I still think the body shapes are slightly different, but I haven't had one side by side to compare them. But the extras, they come with the Fishman Fluence pickups. This one has Gibson humbuckers in here, so that's, you know, which one do you like, in my opinion. But the extras are actually $100 more expensive at $899. They have a slightly different layout with everything down here, which some people might prefer. I mean, this has it in the traditional Explorer location up here, but without a pick guard. They both have the flame maple veneer tops on them, so they look about the same. They just have different color options. But this one has a Floyd Rose, so I guess it just kind of depends on what you want. But being an artist's signature guitar and being cheaper than that, I was surprised. That's why I'm saying $7.99 actually feels like a good deal on these things. And they've been hard to find in stock at release. So what are my first impressions on this instrument? I'm a big Brendan Small fan, but I've got to say, so far, this is my least favorite signature guitar to come out of him. Maybe it's just because I have nostalgia over the uh, whole Thunder Horse and the Snow Falcon. Maybe it's because I'm not a big Floyd Rose guy or 24 frets and all that stuff, but it is still a cool new addition to his signature lineup. And I'm glad it's different because then you can justify owning one of each and they'll all cover different tones and situations. And another reason why I didn't like this thing at first was I wasn't a fan of the color, but these things look nothing like the stock photos. I mean, take a look at the stock photo. It kind of has like a, a weird greenish tinge to it, which I get it, a ghost. You think like Ghostbusters, those things were green. So a green tint would make sense. But at least for this particular one, it's more of like a really dark blue. It goes into like a bluish green hue right here. I actually really enjoy the color of this thing now that I've seen it in the flesh. So if you were like me, kind of unsure about the color, give it a chance. Now, as far as the weight, it's pretty chunky but not too bad. It definitely is a large feeling guitar. So if you're a smaller guy, this might feel way too big on you. The access heel carve, it's nice, but you can't easily get to every single fret in my opinion. When I'm playing naturally, it's about the 21st fret that you don't feel anything. But once I move to the 22nd, that's when you start running into this part of the cutaway. And sure, you can get the 23rd and 24th fret, but you're going to be stretching. It's a little uncomfortable. I wish they would have did the uh, Jason Hook signature thing on this and just sculpted a little bit more out of here. It would have made the guitar look weird. I mean, they probably could have went even as far as just taking a little little bit more out of this area to help with that whole situation. But if you're looking for a guitar that you can get all 24 frets with absolutely nothing in your way, probably not for you. But if you're only playing up until the 22nd fret anyways, it's effortless in my opinion. And the neck, very thin, but yet it starts to beef up just a hair right here. So if you like those pencil kind of shredder necks, you will enjoy this instrument. So to learn a little bit more about the Ghost Horse Signature Explorer of Brendan Smalls, let's go ahead and throw this on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs before getting to a playing demo. Inside the Ghost Horse, let's go ahead and check out the specs of this beast. So as I told you earlier, you have Gibson USA pickups in here, but it's the Burst Bucker 1 and the Burst Bucker 2 that Brendan's well known for using. So exact same pickups as you would find in a Gibson, so that's going to bode well for our tones. But as far as our cavities themselves, here you can see a little barcode in here that says Brendan Explorer and then some other markings in this other one. So you can see the mahogany wood grain within here. Now, does that look like the highest grade mahogany in the world to me? No, but it's still within the family of mahogany. And then you just have a flame maple veneer. And if you're not familiar with what a veneer is, it's basically like a paper thin sheet of wood. They just cut it really thin. That way you have all this beautiful figuring, but you don't actually have to put a big full top on here. Like normally an explorer that would have a maple top, it would probably come down to about right here. Whereas this is just a small thing that kind of sits on top to make it look fancy on a budget. But the pickups themselves read 8.08K ohms in the bridge and then our neck position a little bit less hot at 7.62. But again, you've got the coil splitting options on each of these. So the neck becomes 3.91 and your bridge becomes about 4.17. And our middle position just for fun, 2.02 .02 when split, and with both of them on, about 3.92. Now what's kind of interesting about this guitar that I never realized until I plugged it in, this has no tone control. So if you're a tone guy, you like to roll that down, this is not your guitar unless you want to rewire it because they have a neck volume 
and a bridge volume, and that also translates to your coil splits. So it's kind of nice about being able to control individual pickups instead of just being, you know, everything split. In your middle position, you can have the neck full, this split, or that split, and this full. You kind of have some additional tonal opportunities there. But I had a lot of people asking me questions about the Floyd Rose that they use on this. According to the website, this is a Floyd Rose 1000 series. They called it the FRT 1000. They're about 200 bucks or so. So it is not the cheapest Floyd Rose in the book, but I really don't know a lot about Floyd's to tell you a lot. Someone was requesting to do these studs. It looks like it measures about 0.29. But to me, this just looks like a regular Floyd Rose with how it's set up and everything. And then once again, no pick guard on this thing, likely because they wanted to show off the flame maple veneer, but they do have our toggle switch in the regular Explorer-like position. But moving on from our mahogany body, we have a mahogany neck with an ebony fretboard, and they've outfitted this with 24 jumbo frets. And now that I've uh, conditioned the fretboard, this thing's actually looking pretty cool. I like the streakage that it's got going on now that the board is a little bit darker. But you might have noticed up here at the 12th fret, we have a special inlay. That's a little spaceship that they call Icarus. And you're also going to find that that's also on the back side of the headstock. Let's go ahead and grab these neck specs. It is a rather wide feeling neck at 1.75 inches at the nut, so that is, you know, about 0.05 larger than normal. And then by the 12th, 2.1. But then they advertise it as a slim tapered neck, 0.85 at the first fret and 0.91 by the 12th. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how it beefs up. Like, like right here at the 17th fret, you're at 1.13. So to be honest, this might not be the neck profile for everybody because it is a rather wide feeling neck and the 24 frets makes this neck feel really long as well. But the scale length is relatively the same. They advertise it on the website as 24.72 instead of the usual 24.75 inches. But it does utilize a locking nut up here and of course you get your truss rod adjustment under there and you've got mini grover tuners on this one with a pearloid epiphone logo that looks much better than just like a little silk screen so it's quite the nice little guitar right here let's flip over to the back remember you get a satin finish back here so that's why it doesn't reflect the light as much as the top so it's a really nice looking guitar but yet it still has all the playability features that a lot of people like gloss on front, satin on back. Now of course, satin finishes will naturally buff up into a polish the more and more you play them, so you can keep that in mind, and if you really hate the satin finish, you can go to town and polish it up to get a more of a semi-gloss. But you can see right here, it looks like just from rubbing against in the case or something, you get like a couple of white spots. But here's what our electronics look like. What's interesting is they've taken the Gibson braided four conductor wiring and they've soldered on a quick connect system to put it on the regular Epiphone pots. So I don't think these are like ultra fancy high end push pull pots, but, but they definitely seem to do the job. But that is good to know that they're on a uh, quick connect system. But here is the route for the Floyd Rose itself. You can see kind of a small block. A magnet does not stick to the metal pieces. And stock from the factory, you have three springs on this one. And then we get an additional back route here because once again, you don't have a pick guard, but this is just looks like a regular three-way toggle switch, nothing fancy there. And the spec sheet calls this an ultra heavy duty output jack. So I guess that's good to know. It feels good to me, so I don't have any complaints there. And just the regular strap buttons in your normal locations. Here we can see our heel swoop, and you do have binding along the body and the neck, but just the top of the body, not the back. But let's go ahead and uh, capture this with our contour gauge. This is a really good indicator of how wide this neck feels. I mean, it starts off feeling regular. It's got like a C shape to it, but then it's like very wide feeling up here towards the 12th. So if you don't like wide necks, I don't think you're going to like this guitar. But if you do and you're more of a shredder guy, I think you might enjoy this quite considerably. So far, QC seems excellent on this. But on the back side of the headstock, as I alluded to earlier, you get your Icarus spaceship right here. And they have one of these things on here. So that just holds your Allen key. So say you're in the middle of a concert, you need to swap a string, you've got it. It's kind of funny. I've been looking for these things. And yeah, here they are the whole time on the back of the headstock. Of course, if you don't want that, you can easily remove it. And here is your serial number. And they actually put Brendan's signature on this one. And here's a quick look at the Grover Mini Tuners. All said and done, this weighs about eight and a half pounds, eight pounds, 8.2 ounces. I will say it feels a lot heavier than that though, because all the weight is right here in the body. 
but let's go ahead and plug this thing in and hear how it sounds. Start with our neck pickup. really versatile sounding instrument. I'm surprised just how good those split coil sounds. Cause you get like the nice typical humbucker stuff, right? But then that cleans up so nicely. and grab a few other samples. I don't know about you guys, but I am really happy with the clean tones out of this. I know generally you wouldn't pick this thing up and go, hey, I need a jazz box clean machine type of guitar, but this, I'm surprised with the clean tones, despite its appearance with, you know, the Floyd Rose and all that. I'm not much of a user of trims, but let's go ahead and switch over to some distortion. <laughs> As far as playability goes, this thing's great. I love the tones out of this. I'm still not in love with the Floyd Rose, but it's just because it's not my personal playing style. So if you like Floyd Roses, go for it. I will say I'm not a big fan of this particular Explorer body shape. It's It's got a really big horn right here. It's just not quite as comfortable as I remember. It's just slightly off from what I like out of Explorers. 
But doing bends up here, you know, towards like the 12th, 15th, whatnot fret, it's really nice because it starts to chunk up as I was telling you earlier. So very effortless in that front. But with this being 24 frets, it makes this neck feel so huge. Like normally when I'm playing in this position, I'm normally in like the five and seven. So that neck is definitely sticking out a little bit further than normal. You might consider that. Toggle switch location, I'm okay with it, but I'm sure there's some people that would probably like it better down here. But not having a tone control, that's one of the most interesting spec choices I've seen. It seems a lot of artists' signature guitars, if they don't use the tone, they just omit it from their guitar. But if you're a big tone user, you're gonna have to rewire this at the very least, because you could have a master volume, master tone, but he wanted control over each individual pickup in his own signature guitar. So ultimately, would I recommend the Ghost Horse Explorer? Yes, I would, but in my opinion, it's more comfortable to sit down with this thing. Is it neck heavy? A, a little, it, it's not too bad. It just wants to sit perpendicular to you. And naturally being an explorer, you can use your arm to kind of anchor it into place. So it's not too bad on that front. So it might not be my new favorite signature guitar from Brendan Small, but I'm glad they keep giving him them because he always has some interesting backstories behind him. And this one, it looks pretty good. And as far as a signature guitar from Epiphone goes with these kinds of specs, I think it is priced very appropriately at $7.99. So check one out at a store if you can find one. Otherwise, we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Thank you for watching, Troglodytes. Take care.